So if you're not going to defend your kids, who's going to defend your kids? Our children are not hefker. Somebody hurts your kid, you go after them. You say, listen, you met L'shem Shemayim, you didn't mean L'shem Shemayim, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You owe this neshama an apology. You, could, you should say it in a nice way, in a bakavadik way, because there's a better chance that they'll apologize. But that's how you have to look at it. A guy in shul came over to your daughter and punched her in the face. She had a black eye, and since then she never came to shul. If that happened, right, it would be push it that you're going to go over to the guy and say, it's six years, it's eight, every year, every week you would remind him, my daughter hasn't come to shul in four days and six weeks, 13, 14 years later, she hasn't come, right? Push it like that, aren't you going to tell the guy? For his benefit, he has to apologize. So what he did wasn't punching in the eye with a black eye, it was worse. Or it was the same. Bottom line, same result. She has not gone to, back into, um, into shul since then. So our children are not Hefker. Our children are not Hefker. You go ahead and you make sure that whoever hurts your kids, whoever hurts your kids, whoever it is, right, apologizes. 100%. Yes, you apologize. You say, and I'm sorry that we let this guy get away with it, and I'm sorry that we didn't press charges, and I'm sorry that we didn't punch him in the face. Not that you should punch him in the face, but you should want to. And we stood by and let you get hurt. Where were we? You know, now we see kids who are broken. You see, when we were kids, we also didn't get so broken from this stuff. Kids are much more delicate now, so they're hurting. They have nightmares years later. Sticks, sticks and stones may break my bones, and names can haunt me for the rest of my life. Mamash, we see people, kids are sensitive. So you have to say, you know, I'm so sorry I let this jerk ruin your life. Ruin your life, or ruin part of your life, not your entire life, right? Ruin 2% of your life. I'm sorry, where was I? We have fathers, tough, strong fathers. Where was I? I saw what happened, and you came crying to me, and I said, it's okay, it's okay. It wasn't okay, it wasn't okay. We pushed it away, because when we were kids, that's what they did to us, and it pretty much worked. Okay? No. And it doesn't work on the next generation. They're super hypersensitive, and they're broken. And so that's what we have to go back, and that's, and you're, that's, that's a nakuda. You're 100% right. You also owe, owe an apology, apology to your kid. Pull the knife out. Then they could start to heal. I'm here for you now. I'm sorry I wasn't there for you then. I'm here for you now. And I'm never going to let anybody hurt you again. We know these kids who are very sensitive were hurt many, many times and hurt by other, other, other people. So when you go ahead and you do this for somebody on a little misdemeanor, right, they know, I got parents. I got backing, right? And then the truth will come out about their real pain because they know they can trust you and you're on their side. That's parent ing. Parent ing means I will protect my children from being hurt and I will show them that they're not alone. Okay, I will boost them and I'll carry them when they're hurt. That's parenting. And people just think it's a frask. <laughs> Those were the good old days. Those were the days, my friend, right? Like one guy said, my father's fingers, one was a therapist, one was a psychologist, one was a psychiatrist, right? Life coach, boom, took care of all the problems. Today it doesn't work like that.